Hello, hi everyone. Welcome to Cloud Sprint. In the last video, we learned how to choose location or the classes of the buckets. We also did some case study. If you have not watched that video, link is in the description. Do watch that as well. In this video, we are going to learn that how to protect our data in cloud, Google Cloud Storage and how to save the cost by enabling bucket versioning policies. We'll also do some use cases. So watch it till the end. While working on Google Cloud Storage, your main job is to protect your data. And Google Cloud Storage offers us some techniques to protect our data. The first one is object versioning feature. It basically supports the retrieval of objects that are deleted or replaced. By this feature, you can enable that your version 1, 2, 3, 4 is maintained. And if you delete version 1, you still have version 2 available for your users. This will protect you from any accidental deletion. The second option is the retention policy. Retention policy prevents the deletion or modification of the buckets for a specified minimum period of time after that they are uploaded, which means that you cannot delete or modify a object or file once you have uploaded in the bucket. This will help you to protect your data for a specific period of time and controlling that it's not deleted. Let's go ahead to the console and find that out in detail. Over here, we will come to cloud storage and we'll click on create. This will create a bucket for us. Once you create on it, you'll be asked to give a unique name, which is globally unique. So I'll say cloud sprint, continue. In the last video, we learned that how to choose location. So let's say I say regional, continue. We also understood that how to, when to choose which storage class. For now, let's keep it default, which is standard. We also learned about that, what is uniform and fine-grained access and how to enforce public access prevention on this bucket. The major part which we are talking in this video is about how to protect your data. Okay, your data is always protected with cloud storage, but you need to choose additional data protection options to prevent your data loss. And GCP offers us two options, object versioning and retention policy. If you want to store your data for data recovery, if you want that something is deleted, I should be able to recover that, then you'll be using object versioning. You can have that maximum number of versions per object. You can configure that. Suppose you just want to save last five versions and uh, expand non-current version. Non-current version means which is not the live object. That's the difference. So once you, suppose A is your current version and you overwrite it with B. So A becomes a non-current version and B becomes live version. That's the difference. So you want that A to be deleted after seven days. This will help you to save the cost. Otherwise, you will have uh, you know n number of uh, uh, versions per object and that will add to the cost in order you don't want that to happen that's all about object versioning this will help you to survive any accidental deletion second option is retention policy as the title says it is best for compliance if you want to prevent the deletion or modification of the buckets object for a specific minimum duration of time after being uploaded which means that you want that object should not be deleted for 30 days. Nobody should be able to modify or delete the uh, objects within this bucket because you have some compliance to be fulfilled that X data must be available for 30 days in a bucket. You don't want any this happen to be there because if someone deletes the data, you lose that compliance and you might have to pay some fines. So in those kind of scenarios, you'll be using the retention policy. If you don't want to protect your data, you can just choose none. I hope these two options are clear now. Versioning is for data recovery. Retention policy is mostly for best compliance. And you configure it while creating the bucket. One very, very important point to note here. If you delete the bucket, if an owner deletes the bucket, these policies do not work. Okay, so be very, very careful whom you are giving what kind of access. That is why the earlier five, six videos which I have made on IAM is very, very important. If you have not checked them out, go ahead and check them out as well. This is how you're going to protect your data uh, using these options. And uh, this will help you to work more efficiently. And you can choose as per your need while creating the buckets. Let's go back to the presentation. I hope this is clear now that how you can protect your data over GCP storage. The next option which Google Cloud Storage offers is lifecycle policies. Lifecycle rules let you apply actions to a bucket objects when certain conditions are met. 
For example, switching objects to a colder storage class when they reach or pass a certain age. This life cycle will help you on many fronts. These policies will help you to save costs, also help you to optimize your utilization. Just a quick recap on the storage classes and all. We have standard, we have near line for 30 days, we have cold line for 90 days, and we have archival for 365 days. Now imagine a situation. You have a data, a shopping history data, which is just used for 30 days, suppose. After 30 days, you might use or might not use for next one year. And after one year, you want that data to be deleted. In that case, these lifecycle policies will work on your behalf. You can just create a JSON or you can configure it from console or from your Terraform, however you're going to create the bucket. What you'll do, you'll create a lifecycle policies that keep the objects in this bucket as a standard resource for 30 days. After that, move it to archival. And once the object age completes 365 days, you can delete it. See how, how powerful this tool can be then. You don't have to, you don't have to take care of each object. The Google Cloud Storage will take care of itself and it will move, it will change the classes for the objects and it will delete it as well when, as and when needed, how you configure it. Let's go ahead and check this on the console as well. Let's go ahead and see how the lifecycle policies work. In the last, uh, while, uh, while understanding the protection of data, we check these options. Okay, let's create a bucket now. Confirm. It will create a bucket for me quickly. Over here, you need to go to lifecycle. We already have two rule existing because we selected it. You need to delete the objects. All non-currents, 5 plus newer versions and 7 plus days when it becomes non-current. Now I'll, I'll go ahead and add a rule because I want to move something to cold line storage. Okay, I want that whenever X thing happens, that X thing, that condition will choose here. But I my job is to move the objects to cold line after this object conditions met which we will select in the next window so my first job is to select what kind of action i want to take i want to move the objects to cold line storage click on continue when do you want this to happen you need to choose that condition you want it on the age you want to create it before the class match any if any new version becomes available the live stage what is your ask that's the main thing so I'll say that, okay, let's choose it over age. As long as it becomes 90 days. Okay, clear? I'm saying as any object age becomes 90 days, move it to cold line storage. Click on create. You will see this rule is created and it will be attached to this uh, bucket, which is cloud sprint bucket. There's a third rule now that you file age is 90 days the class of that particular object will be set to cold line let's add another rule okay i want to say that delete the object this time i want to choose a life cycle policy that like i want to delete an object click on continue when say when the age of the file becomes 365 days so whenever any object or a file age becomes 365 days, it should get deleted automatically. I'll say continue, I'll say create. You can see that delete object 365 plus days since the object was updated means that any object which is, uh, which is 365 days plus days old will be automatically deleted because you don't need that file right that's the point of creating lifecycle policy that you can take the leverage of the classes available and you can take the uh, benefits out of it you can protect your data you can uh, save cost okay that's how you you configure a, a life cycle you can delete all in single click also check protection once that uh, object versioning is enabled here we already enabled it you can also manage rule 
this object versioning and retention policy they don't work hand in hand because of course it's contradictory because at one place you're saying that you cannot modify something and at other place you're saying you want to save multiple versions so they can't work together either you'll uh, enable this or you'll enable this okay this is how you configure lifecycle and you protect your data and your objects can be uploaded here let's go back to the presentation okay i hope that was helpful when to use which class how to move it how to create a life cycle and how to attach it to a bucket this concludes all four concepts what you needed to know is knowing the location the classes the, the protection and the life cycle let's go ahead and do a case study now the case study says that the cost of your application logs are exceeding the project bill which means whatever logs you are generating from your application is exceeding the project bill these logs are used by teams regularly for 30 days and might be used for some audit purpose once in every quarter development team is using these logs maximum for 30 days to test or to check how your application have behaved after that it's not used uh, frequently but it might be needed for some audit purpose every quarter which is every 90 days the logs are still being saved in a bucket for forever resulting to higher bills which means there is no policy that we are just dumping the logs again and again and again and it is uh, it is increasing your bills exponentially the task the major task is you need to reduce the cost of storage by keeping the logs only for 90 days how are you going to do it pause the video think it through and check the answer the answer is we'll create a life cycle policies the first step will be moving the objects to code line after 30 days and the second option will be deleting, deleting the objects after 90 days. We need these logs for 30 days as a standard storage as it is frequently accessed by the development team. So we are not going to touch that for 30 days. After 30 days, we will directly move it to the code line storage because we need every quarter. You know that if we need something every quarter after 90 days, we move it to uh, code line storage. We also need to save the third line, which is the data is being saved in bucket for forever. So we need to delete the objects as the last line suggests that we only need, need these logs for 90 days. So after 90 days, we are going to delete that logs. Okay. I hope this is, uh, this is helpful to understand it, that how these all four things put together works. That's how you're going to configure this case study. I hope this is clear. And uh, if you have any question, please uh, comment and let me know. It. I'll try to answer them point around cloud storage cli is called gsc it's a python application which lets you access cloud storage from the command line by using gs util you can create delete the buckets upload download list move copy anything all operational work you do it via gs util gs util is very very powerful and very very reliable uh, utility by cli and uh, by using cli you can do anything okay I really recommend you to go through the documentation uh, link because it has a lot of options. It's, this is GSUtil documentation and you can see all the commands what GSUtil can uh, do for you. So uh, for one of the example is GSUtil CP. All, all the command have a lot of other possibilities. All these possibilities you can find here. And uh, I really recommend you to go ahead and check few of them because this is relevant for the exam as well as when you work, you should know all these commands to work while you work with um, GSUtil or Google Cloud Storage. Right? That sums up our Google Cloud Storage topic. And thank you for your time. Thanks for watching the video. Have a good day.